Hello, welcome to Making Interactive NFTs. I'm Dr. Abstract. Let's go take a look at the TIA site. And there I am, Dr. Abstract. And we've already taken a look at some of these NFTs. And now we're going to scroll on down and have a look at one of these two. So these are both made with Zimbook. And they're basically showing pictures. This one of virtual reality pottery by Slam Darklow. And here is the Focuso photographer for Hollander Maui being presented in a book. <laughs> so uh, let's go have a look. This Hollander Maui fellow. Oh, Picasso's backyard. We'll F11 this and go into full screen here. So we can pick up that corner. And as you can see, it makes a book. You may have seen interactive books like this before. And we have a book class in Zim that allows us to make this quite easily. Ooh, and I sold that piece. Oh, I mean, Hollander Maui sold this piece to um, a lovely gay fellow from Toronto uh, for 400 bucks. So that's nice. It was shown in the focus gallery. So all this work is out of focus. And... Um, those are trees, and this one's called Tree Hug. It's an out-of-focus tree. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Girl Blue. That was in Montreal. Quebec City. Toronto. Dundas, where I live. Hawaii. Wild Waikiki. Toronto, Montreal. So there he is, Hollander Maui, and the various reviews. You can also uh, traditionally use a keyboard, or you could put a link in there to go back through these pages, if you so desire. So this NFT has done fairly well in terms of sales uh, by Hollander Maui. Very nice. Let's go see how it was coded. So I'll drop this down a little bit and pop on into the code here. Mm -hmm. So, first of all, it's all in a folder called Hollander. There are the assets and the font. Um, and here we have the scripts that are also local. And we're bringing that in with a single script that is a crystal. That crystal script looks like this, and it just calls the two other scripts locally as well. So the two other scripts are CreateJS right here and the Zim min. I suppose you might call. We have a template that all of this is put together. I think in the template we call the, the scripts individually. No big deal. I'm sure you'll work that out. These days we call ES6 modules, but you can also call the scripts in the old-fashioned way. That's no problem. I would probably recommend doing it. I haven't actually tested out the NFT world uh, yet with ES6 modules. Probably works, but there's no harm in just using the template and calling the scripts. Zim is a framework. We tend not to work with other libraries as much. Um, and so there's not an ordering issue or anything like that uh, It will come to play. All right, so uh, as mentioned, we are using the Zim framework and there we are bringing in Zim. And here's some, what we tend to do is we put, this is what we put on the, the Hicketnock site or the TIA site or the OBJKT or whichever <laughs> whichever one you want to view it with now in the Web 3.0 world. Uh, or if we're making for FX hash, whatever we're going to put in there, we put right in the code as well. And that's nice. It gets then locked in with the NFT itself if they view the source. So that's what that is. And then we're preparing as well for... Uh, this was done a little while back where it looks like we were still using the ES5 VARs, but uh, no doubt uh, Zim is fine with ES6. Most of the work we do now is with ES6. As a matter of fact, we just converted all of our docs over to ES6 uh, examples. 550 examples. <laughs> My gosh. <laughs> so I know that one well. Um, but anyway, here we are listing the picks. So these are the assets that we're going to bring in. And what we've done is we've done it in sort of two steps. We have brought in these assets. This is a font asset right there. So that's how we specify the name of a font and the source of it. 
These will all be found at this path right here in the Assets folder. So there it is. And then we've brought in the first few pictures. So if you look at the, at the book here, that's the signature, probably picture one, picture two, picture three. So we loaded those and, and we, we will wait. So when, when frame gets called here, we're running a waiter. A waiter is three little dots that go bloop, 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 bloop. We've matched the waiter color, the background color of the waiter to how we feel uh, it should look. So uh, a, a sort of a darker green with white dots. That's what the waiter will do. And we pass that waiter, the dot, 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 right into there uh, as the uh, progress parameter. So we're also going to say that we're using the fit mode. So this book will fit onto the page. And that means if it's square, um, it fits within a square in a sense. And if uh, th there it is fitting. So it doesn't really matter what we look at it. It's just going to be the shape of a book. And that, that seems to make sense at these dimensions right here. So that's all being passed into the frame that will handle that for us. Uh, we've also gone directly to this thing called mouse move outside. We realized in our book that we had run into a problem in that this was featured in an iframe on Tia. And in an iframe, we don't have access to the mouse outside the iframe. Uh, it's just not allowed due to security reasons. So anyway, um, that sometimes left the book in kind of like a I'm changing the page mode. <laughs> if you try, uh, I can't remember how we did it. We somehow are trying to change a page, but then release outside of the iframe, there was a problem. But that anyway, that's been um, amended or adjusted. So some tricky things there. So uh, we are passing that waiter in along with the fonts. And then what we're doing with the rest of these pictures here, so the rest of this batch, they don't load till later. And how are we dealing with that? So we've got the asset that's a SIG. We've got all the titles. We're going to come back and look at I'm just looking at the pictures for a second. Uh, it looks like we're lazy loading. So the first three assets are preloaded. The other uh, assets are uh, loaded directly in line. So that's like a lazy loading where uh, it won't hold up the app. They'll just pop in later. But presumably, we won't even get to the rest of the pages until they've, they're, they're probably already loaded anyway. But we didn't want to hold up the whole app uh, for to load all of the pictures. You know what I mean? They might not even go in and look at all the rest of the pictures. And also, we have to watch it a little bit on the interplanetary file system. Isn't always the fastest thing to load, unfortunately, uh, because we're relying on you know, whatever, not quite crowdsourcing, whatever you want to call that. It's just like all this stuff is coming from a variety of peer-to-peer -peer computers. So um, if we want people to see the NFT more quickly, then don't preload all these other pictures that they might not even get to or that they that can come in uh, later if we so desire. So that's, that's the plan there. That's why we've only got the first few loaded. And note that this is in assets. And there we are passing it into the assets along with the path. So only the first few here are preloaded. These other ones are going to be used and we'll load them in later. We have repeated the names of them here, here. Note those are there. And that just allows us to easily make the pictures that are on the page from this one array. Possibly we could have done, I don't know, some sort of had a smaller array, passed it into here, and then joined, or whatever that might be called, <laughs> dot, dot, dotted the, um, the arrays together, or concatenated the arrays, whatever after, but no big deal. Okay, so I think that's enough of that intro stuff. Uh, we're, when the frame is ready, where'd it go? I collapsed it. When the frame is ready, we call this function. That would now be an arrow function that we would use. And we're preparing with a stage, a width, and a height of the frame, and we put those in local variables. We're now preparing the first page here, which is not, uh, not a generic page. So this is the first page. It has the signature on it of the book. 
this is well that, that's the second page third so all these other ones are we can do in an array or an array with a loop kind of thing but this is the first page and we're taking an asset that is that signature we now say a new pick as of uh, zim version zim we have divided asset so the way that we have been doing it is with an asset call to the name of the asset the signature asset right there and then we're scaling that down a little bit changing its alpha centering it on the first page which is a zim page a zim page is handy because it are we using zim pages on the others um, it's really just a container. Yeah, we're not really making great use of the page anyway. It's a container, but there are two parameters right here that will easily do a gradient across a page. So that's sometimes why it's handy. And we put up in Zim, we put up with it for a long time. It's like, how do we make a page in Zim? And how do we make a page in Zim? And we say, well, you make a new container, put all the stuff in a container and show the container or hide the container if you don't want to see that page. And so for years, that's what we said. And finally we went, oh, we're crying out loud. Okay, here's a page object. And we made a page object, which is basically a container. Uh, but we had to think of something. <laughs> it's really exactly the same as a container, but we just called it page. So instead of doing it exactly the same, we did add the ability to add a background rectangle that also has a nice easy way to do a gradient if we sort of that. We're not using gradients here. But uh, anyway, so we, we've always had a pages class and a pages class would take a bunch of containers and hide and show them when we wanted to. Well, now we can have them do that. The pages class can do that with a bunch of page objects. <laughs> Yay. So anyway, there we are making a page object, really just a container as mentioned. We've made it a little bit smaller than the stage itself. Uh, that gives it, so that's this right here is the stage and we can't really tell because the color is all the same, but probably the stage borders like goes around like that. Uh, for instance, if we were to change our colors here, the outer color and the color, I think we've got darker for both of them. So why don't we go green for the outer color and then we'll be able to see what's happening here. So did you expect that? Um, here's the green of the outer color. This gray, this dark gray is the stage. And then we've got the grays of the book. So this is 0.9, I guess, the width, 0.9 of the width of the stage and 0.9 of the height of the stage, I think we set it at. And that's why this is the fit mode. You see how it's, it's going to be um, 0.9. This gray is 0.9 of the width. Uh, well, and 0.9 in the height still. But anyway, we're, we're fitting this proportion into the into the window. So that's what it looks like. However, there's no point in putting the green around the outside. So when we put the um, darker around the outside, or the same color basically, then we get uh, this effect where we can't see what's going on on the outside, yeah, which is fine. And then the book stays proportionally in there. So that's just to give us some some extra space as we're as we're dragging here that, that will help operate on that. We could make it full screen. That, that would be fine, too. Um, all right. So that was down here. Stage width. Oh, yeah, it's going to, of course, be half. Uh, each page is half the stage width. Uh, but the stage height is full height. And then that's the uh, the background color of the, the book as well, right there. And we're passing in the signature. Oh, that's the background color of the first page. My apologies for background color of the first page. So there's the signature being placed on the first page. We're moving it over slightly. We're starting it with an alpha of zero so that we can animate in. And a blend mode of lighten. I don't know why we needed a blend mode of lighten on that. Let's have a look. Refresh here. Watch it. There it is animating in. I don't think we needed a blend mode of lighten at all on it. It must have been for some other reason. Perhaps we put it over top of a, a picture so, you know, to see if it was a signature. But there we go. When we load, it waits and then animates in. That's so that we can concentrate on the picture there. There's the book. Here's the signature. So we see the book first. We see the signature. Then we see the corner. If everything comes in at the same time, 
sometimes you don't see it. So book, signature, corner. Ah, that's what I do. I pick up the corner. Okay, so that's a little bit unusual. And there's other things you can do about it. You could put little arrows on here. As a matter of fact, we had somebody wanting to use the book to make their NFT of a comic strip. And we said, yeah, sure. And we even helped them out with it because it's very easy to do. XTC Arsenal or something like that. And they're going all gung-ho on it. They, they, I don't know, half my Twitter messages are about them. They're just really keen on all this. But anyway, they wanted arrows, so it was quite easy to add little arrows on the side and make it work both by picking it up and clicking the arrows. The arrow basically does something like that where it just switches the page. I'm using the arrow keys there. Um, all right, so anyhow, let's go back to the code then. So we're animating that signature in on the first page. We have a set of colors. These, this series is going to be used for the background colors of the book. You might think, oh, well, why didn't we just use the same page color? Um, it just, it's, a, it's nice. You see how that page back there is a different color than the page underneath it? So it's good as you're dragging this for those two pages to be a different. And same with this, as I pick that up, it's good for that to be a different page than the, the, the picture in the background. So generally the books look better when they cycle through a variety of pictures. For the, uh, for the other one, which was called mm, Dark Low, probably. Slam Dark Low. <laughs> what a name. There it is, Dark Low. Let me open up the Dark Low for you. So I've just opened that up. This one, similar, but the logo bounces in. And here is the corner coming up. And there I can pick up that corner. And this is the pottery of Slam Darklo. <laughs> that cracks me up. Who is that Slam Darklo fellow? Oh, but I do like these uh, Venetian ones. Aren't they cool? Do you like that? Yeah, so tall and skinny. I'm not sure if you can really make pottery like that. Our hands would have to be like a very long, skinny arms that I'm putting a fake hand on a broomstick or something like that to make that pottery. Anyway, those, those are lovely. The Venusians. Okay, so there's another book and take a look at the colors of the pages that we've used there. Basically, they're the Zim colors, but we've just darkened them and that uh, allows... Uh, us to see the pages as we turn them. Okay, we don't need to see the dark low. All right, so we've got the colors, and that's a series, which means every time we call a color, or every time we call colors, it's going to uh, pick from the series. First, we'll get that one, then that one, then that one, then that one, then it'll go back to this one, this one, this one, etc. from a series. Here are the titles. These are the words that are going to go on the bottom of the pictures right here. And we're now making an array of pages that we're going to pass into a pages object, right? Uh, or I guess the book object. Yeah, sorry. We're going to pass into the book our pages. Okay, so we're making an array of objects that we want to put in that book. It's right here. The first page is the first thing in the array. We're setting a style to the font of Eldorado. So everything that gets made from now on will be Eldorado in style or in font. And then we're looping through our picks. So this is Zim loop, loop through the picks, which are, oh, way up here, I think. Yeah, we're looping through these. So we're gonna make a page basically for each of those picks. We get the pick, we get the index number. The index number we're going to use because as we get a page, that'll be the name. And so we use the index to get the title. So here is our new page. It's a generic page that will have that color. So we call colors. Every time we loop, we call colors. And by calling the uh, series, it will ask for the next one in line. So you can use series in a variety of ways. As a matter of fact, if the page were the only thing with color, we could put it in here like so. We could say color, col uh, yeah, I guess it would be color for the page. Um, colors, like that, colors, like 
like that. So this is slightly different. Note that we're not calling it. We're specifying what series to use as we apply those styles. And then it would pick that color, each one in order. However, labels also have colors. So that means it's going to mess up, uh, I suppose. So we, we don't want to do that, in other words. Um, we might be able to specify style only for the page and then put colors in there, but just specifying the colors this way. Oh, we also are darkening that color as we go. Anyway, uh, we're taking the results of that series and we're darkening it, darkened by 0.5. Um, it's just a bit easier than saying dot darken, dot darken, dot darken, dot darken on there, which we could do, or we could have just figured out what the darker versions of those are. I didn't even know we bothered darkening them. I guess those are lighter than we're looking at. So that makes us a page. We're storing it in P there. Then we're grabbing the asset. So let's see if the asset is less than or equal to three. Oh, right. Uh, then we're grabbing the pick because the pick is loaded with a path right here. This is a path issue. We've got a path. These are assets without the path when we preloaded them. So the ones that are preloaded here, we don't need to use the path. We can just say that as an asset name. But when we lazy load, we didn't, it didn't have a path. Ah, right. That's this version of Zim. In the recent version of Zim, as soon as you set a path here, any lazy loading will assume that path unless you overwrite it with path equals some different path. Hello. Or sounds or something. Okay, so that... Well, it, thank you. Thank you very much. We have a forward slash. Woohoo! Um, anyway, what would happen here is any preloaded ones were already preloaded with this path, so that's fine. Then we just use the ID to get at it. But if it's lazy loaded, so they're not preloaded, these are the only ones that were preloaded. Well, these were preloaded. So for the later ones that were lazy loaded, uh, it would end up following that path. And now it would end up following the path inside of here, but we're not now. <laughs> As in, the latest version of Zim has introduced a global path variable that we can use for, for lazy loads. This version of Zim, back in Zim NFT, that's the last version of Zim, although there was a Zim NFT 01. Um, this version of Zim, we didn't have that, and so we just are calculating here as we grab that image. So where did that image go? Right here. If we're less than the third picture, then use the name of the picture directly. Otherwise, use the path plus the picture. We wouldn't have to do that anymore. It would just be pick. Oh, pick. <laughs> Ick. It would just be pick now. So that would be Zim version Zim. It would just be load the pick. Because the path would be uh, default to the same as our assets path. All right, and then we're scaling that to the page, 90% or 90% of, it's either 90% of the width or 90% of the height, whichever one is um, limiting there. And then we center it on the page. So uh, this would now be as well in the new version of Zim, new pick like that as well. Okay, and we wouldn't need that stuff. So all this is reducing pretty nicely, isn't it? new pick, whatever the pick is from our, what is the pick? The pick is we're looping through picks. So that's going to be this right there. First one, second one, third one. Again, currently now uh, it will take the default path that was used when we loaded. Therefore, we would be fine in just new pick. Okay. Um, isn't that nice? Like, I mean, we've gone through uh, versions of Zim, one, two, one, duo, tri, cat, uh, cat, four, fourth, V, six, hep, oct, neo, ten, a cat, NFT, and now we're in version Zim, Zim. And we're still improving. Like, we were, we sort of inherited an asset system for CreateJS, and then we just loaded in, called it asset. Then we've and we did that for sound too. We just said asset and threw the sound in there. 
Um, now we're, we've broken that up into a new PIC and a new ODD. A PIC, P-I-C, new VID, V-I-D, and a new ODD, A-U-D. A new SVG, SVG. So uh, we've broken up our assets into those specific classes in our latest version of Zim. All right, good. And we have a label here that says Hollander Maui. That's on each one. So that's right up here, Hollander Maui. It's the one that gets the font, the special font, the El Dorado. So we don't have to worry about specifying a font because it's declared here, but we're then going to the color. Uh, and then we're dropping the alpha down. Yeah. Okay. We, we could have put it in the style. We could have said, hey, all labels have a, a color of whatever. To do that, to specify that labels have that color, we're generally sitting here in the, in the style. Like that and probably drop this down and then we would say label so any label will have a color of white like that and so that's if we didn't say label then the page might have a color of white although we've overridden the color there you know what i mean so it might conflict with something else but there we are saying here's the type that we want to access it's kind of like saying all paragraphs will have a an indent of this or a padding of that um, so then we wouldn't have to put the white here and we could have removed this like so. What about this other label? What's, what color is it? It's silver. Ah, so it's a different color. All right. And so at that point we said, well, you know, and, and this label is yet possibly that that would be a default label, label titles. I think that's just the, the text for it. And there it is in there. Don't, do we use it again later? I don't know why we threw it in a variable. I may as well just put titles at I in there. Like so. What do you think? Do I ever use label twice? Usually there's a reason for me doing that, so it's possible. We're in a loop. I don't think I see a reason for that. Anyway, I got a bunch of things on the go. Let me just undo through these. I'm not going to bother setting that style in that manner. What was this that was playing around with the path of sounds? Okay, I think we're good. All right, however, yeah, I don't think we need a variable label when we could just put it right there. Maybe we're gonna put it somewhere twice. See a label, another label anywhere? I don't, yeah, okay, maybe we can just throw it in there. So uh, one of them is white. We're setting the alpha down, the scale, and we're locating it at a certain place on the page. You see these numbers. Those numbers uh, are just trying to position it right, right in here. That's a tricky place to position. This is at some 90%, I think, or whatever. But anyway, we probably put that in place using place. So there's a thing called dot place like this. And if you run that, then you can just pick up the label and put it somewhere. So if I refresh here, I can now pick the label up, <laughs> operating the page as well, but I can, I can pick the label up and place it somewhere, for instance, there, and look at my console with an F12. Uh, and here it tells me in the console that that's its location. So then I copy these little words here and I put them right into here, but, but ex oh, I didn't hit the copy properly. <laughs> you get the idea, right? So I just copy those from there and I stick them right into here. And so that's probably how that was put in place. Uh, sometimes you do that, sometimes you eyeball it. You could always just like sit there and change these until it looks good. But, and we used to provide a grid well, we still provide a grid where a grid would show up here and I could look at the grid and pick the number based off the, the pointer in the grid. But then we sort of worked out a way to do that place as mentioned. It was much easier. We also have ways to position things around the edges of stuff. Let me just refresh that. Uh, where we can easily center it along the top here, down a little bit or center it from the right or put it in the top right, top left, bottom left, top or bottom right, and any of the centers, including the centers. And then we can shift it from there quite easily. So that has really taken away a lot of the placement because most of the things that you place 
are really around the edges anyway. Uh, things like buttons and sliders and titles and etc. So that's with pose. And then we got low. Anyway, we have a variety of ways to do things. Plus we got center and center reg and these other ones as well. But uh, Loc does the registration point. Sometimes you just, you know, you're out in the middle of nowhere and, and sorry, I'm not against an edge and it's very specific. Then you can introduce dot place. And it's a nice, easy way to find out the exact location of something. Here we have another label and note that our titles are indeed working with that. I think they are planet zip to that. Yep, they are. So the titles are still working down here, even though we have thrown the titles that I write in there. So that's why when we loop through the picks, that's the array, we get given each element of the array like so. I could have just put pick there. Um, and that means that that would be the first element of the array, the second element of the array, etc. But we need an index number as well, which happens to be the next parameter that we're given, followed by a total. T often we would use if we need the total, but we don't have to have those if we don't need them in here. However, we do want to match our I to get the title. We're positioning and padding that. Um, oh, we've got a little kind of label thing going. You see that the dark around that in here. So we're adding some padding to, to that and, and making a background color. This one doesn't have that. So labels can have a background color if we so desire. There we are using RGBA for the black background, the background color. And that allows us to do the alpha. Recently, in, in newer versions of Zim, we wouldn't bother doing that. We would say black dot two alpha like that. So we've added a 2 alpha, 0.4 or something, and that there 0.3. That's a little bit easier to do than having to think about the RGBA. You can take any color and dot on a 2 alpha, much like we've taken colors and dotted on a darken or a lighten. You can also dot, dot on a 2 color, so some color dot 2 color blue, and then a percentage towards blue, and that would go from whatever color you are towards blue, a certain percentage, uh, or actually ratio between zero and one. So that's probably how we would do it now, rather than dropping to the RGBA, which is always a little bit of a pain to type all that stuff out. Um, we normally would, and we have actually adjusted the alpha there on the whole label, but that's the alpha of the background as well, not just the alpha of the text color on the background. So that's, oh, that's the color. That's the, oh no, this is the background color. Oh, I see. No, so reverse way, sorry. The color of the text is actually silver without any alpha, but it will have an alpha 0.8, whereas the background is background to blend a little bit with whichever gray we have going on here. Uh, who knows? We probably just copied this from the last one we did, which was um, the Slam Dark Low. And those ones might blend nicely against those dark, remember, different colors. Here, where you're blending against gray, it's kind of like, oh, what the heck, you know, why bother with all that? <laughs> but uh, like I said, uh, we probably just copied this in and said, yeah, it looks good. We'll just leave it. Arr. Sounds good. Anyway, we've made the page now. So that's us making our page. And we push that onto the array of pages right here. So it'll go after the first one. In other words, we've just made all our pages. Yay! The last page is a little bit different too, in that the last page, well, using my arrows, oh, two different last pages. So there's this one right here, which we may have done just with a picture and called it reviews. Probably we did. And then this one right here is um, the Zim icon. So the last page, yeah, here it is, is a new page, same as before. But we've got a frame dot made with. So this thing is a made with Zim, except we, it looks like we took away the words. Yeah, there are the words. This is supposed to say made with Zim, null. So if I put null here like that, then uh, we would get the default look of the made with Zim. Oh, I don't know. Is it worth it? It's probably going to be dark, which means we're not going to see it gets a dark unless we change the color of it. Oh, and it's got the font. It's been styled. So we have a styled made with Zim because we didn't override our general style for um, for that special thing. 
So remember our general style is up here, El Dorado on anything that can receive a font. And in this one, we're overriding it with Verdana. Whereas this one, we didn't override it. So it gets the title, it gets the nice El Dorado. But this is overridden by Verdana. And the last page here, wherever it was, last page has some text in it. It's got a label in it. It comes with the made with and it's getting the font. So anyway, we decided to not put in a made with Zim. We only kept the Zim here, almost like a signature. I mean, you guys don't need to put the made with Zim or the Zim icon in your NFTs, obviously. Uh, but since Holland, or since Holland, <laughs> who, who am I again? Since Dr. Abstract, made Zim. It's almost like our signature, so I don't mind keeping it in there. Plus, one of the reasons we're making NFTs like this is we want to give you examples, give the people examples of what can be made with Zim. So it's it's sort of a, yeah, we're doing two things at once. We're making NFTs and selling them. Yay! And we're, we're also showing that NFTs can be made with Zim. All right. So what was that? couple quotes for no text and we are positioning that this is centering it on that page but when we centered it on the page we wanted it moved down a little bit so uh, the, you know not everything needs to be weighted in the center so uh, this this will bring it down here give it a little bit of you know weighting there so it doesn't topple over um, okay <laughs> Uh, the page the topple over if you put too much at the top. So we did relative movement. In other words, that's how we do relative movement. So we can loke something or position it. Hey, there we are positioning something down zero from the center, 50 from the bottom on the page that we just made, this new page. So that was us positioning that label at that location. Here we are just centering it on the last page, but then doing relative movement to move down. If we wanted to, we could have dot posed that and not have done these things. And then we would have said uh, 0, comma, 30, comma, from the center, comma, from the center, comma, on the last page. So this means 0 from the center on the last page. 30 down from the center on the last page is the same as centering it on the last page and moving it down 30. Huh, you know, it's up to you. What have you got there? You got 32 characters versus what do you got here? 26 characters. Which one did we go with? <laughs> ah, da, da, da. We'll take the 26 characters. Anyway, whatever you want. Those are two, two different ways that you could do that. And we're putting that last page into the pages array. And here's our book. So this is the crux of the thing. And all we did was make some, basically take some pictures. We added some labels to the tops and bottoms of those things. And then here's our book. It's going to have a width and a height of the stage width times 0.9, stage height times 0.9. Here are our pages. The roll up is going to happen after two seconds. And uh, we're starting on page one. So sometimes the pay, the book starts on page zero. Okay, so this is page zero. This is page one. What, what the book asks you to do is tell me what page is there. Is that zero or is it one? So if it were page zero, this thing would be there. And when I flip the page, I'd see the green thing. I'd see the, the blue thing here. And I flip the page and I see that other one here. Okay, so that would almost start the book with the cover. Or you can start the book kind of open in a sense, and that's how we've done it. We're calling that page one, or sorry, page zero. This is page one. So our index starts at zero, obviously. But that's the page on the right-hand side. Zero. Right. Hollander Maui animates in. Okay. But obviously, I would want a different page color in the background at that point, which can be easily done. We did something like the very first page right here isn't darker if we call it just dark. Okay, 
this is darker. <laughs> this is dark. <laughs> so darker is number sign 111. Dark is number sign 333. Okay, and then black is 000. zero, zero. Or if you wanted some other pay per color like purple, then these are Zim colors. You can do HTML colors. So there's purple, Hollander Maui on purple. Okay. Uh, if you put quotes around it, then that's the HTML purple. Okay, just it's close actually, but a little bit, a little bit darker. Some things are quite different. So for instance, here's the HTML color red. Whoa. Oh. Here's the Zim color red. It's more like a tomato. HTML red, Zim red. Okay, and I think you'll find it's very similar with things like blue. So here's the HTML blue. Oh. And here's the Zim blue, which is more of a teal. Okay, sky blue, not quite as dark. All right, what color was that? <laughs> a lot of colors ago. And you can also use uh, number sign 00CCC or whatever, whatever you want. Start page on, let's go to page one. Yeah, that was it. All right, I think that's almost it then. And then we got some bleed, which we're putting a clear, yeah. So uh, if your book is smaller than the frame, I think we I think we took care of this. I can't remember for sure. I think we baked this in now. But if your book is smaller than the frame, you get sometimes a bleed right here where you're, when I switch pages, I see the other page kind of coming through just on a very thin line there. Let's see if we can see that. I don't, know, I don't want to really point it out per se, but let's see, see what, I, I think I've got the wrong color in there. Oh uh, yeah, there, did you see it right, right against that edge? There. So that's just a, a little bit of a bleed of the pages moving in behind there. There's all sorts of stuff going on in the book. It's kind of like, ah, it's annoying, a bit of a canvas bleed. So I think we baked that into the book now. I can't remember, but this was the solution is to sort of put a, a rectangle with the frame color for, that's a four width. This is the border basically. So here, let's change that to red so you can see it. So there's a red rectangle that's see-through in here. And, and that means it goes over top of this background color so that we don't see that bleed. But like I said, I think we tried to bake that in. We also said no mouse. If we didn't do no mouse there, then we've just put a rect... Oh, uh, we're fine because it's clear. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, we're okay. Uh, that's clear, which means it's not interactable. This faint is almost looks like it's clear. So that's a faint color. Hey, I can, I can see through it. That's alpha something, something, something. Oh, I can still click through it. Mm, I know why. Oh, maybe not. It might just be that the book works on stage mouse down. Yeah, I think that might be the case, in which case anything on the stage is getting the mouse down. All right. Uh, I suspect that's it. But normally you can't interact through a rectangle. Let's just Try putting a red thing there. Nor well, <laughs> we won't be able to see it at all, will we? There. See, is the book working? No, it's not working. <laughs> we, can't, we can't even see the book. I was testing to see, well, let, let's just go you know, like do a dot alpha on that, like a 0.5 or whatever. And we refresh here. Okay. Yeah, so the book still works. Normally that doesn't happen. Um, it's just the book is the book itself operates on stage mouse down. So I, I believe that that's the case anyway, and that's why it's it's working within that region. But I could be wrong. Uh, all right, and just in case, all we've done there, it's not the end of the world, is put a no mouse on it. And what the no mouse means is don't make this thing interactable. Not that it's really getting in the way anyway. It doesn't do any harm. No, <laughs> don't, don't want it to be red either. Uh, it was the frame dot color. All 
Like so that's the color of the frame. So this background color. All right, good. There we go. And we have put in here, by the way, the docs for all of the items used. Um, that's what we do in CodePen, and we did it on some of the early NFTs as well as an educational thing. So if you wanted to find out about the frame, you would copy this URL right here and go, okay. And there it opened up the frame along with its things. And in here, if we go down to the frame's properties, so here are the parameters of the frame, and they're quite extensive. Here are the methods <coughs> of the frame. And here are the properties of the frame, including... I knew this was going to happen. I don't see the, do you see the color? There it is. Good. I was going, can you imagine if we didn't show the property? Color and outer color. Okay. So color, frame.color would be one of the properties of the frame amongst with those. And there are the events that can happen or that can be handled by the frame. Uh, frame handles a lot of, a variety of events as well. Okay. So that's it. Oh, by the way, at the bottom of that as well here, are, uh, there's a tour that's a, a specific video about the frame. It takes you through all of those properties and parameters and stuff. There's bits that use the frame. That would be like most of them. And then there's videos which go off and search YouTube for our Zim videos that relate to the frame as well. Plus, you can see the code that went into the frame. And you can see all of this stuff on its own page if you so desire. And close it. Okay, so this is the frame module right here. Other things that we can do with the frame is we can preload. So when we preload assets and paths, then here are our new pick, odd, vid, and SVG. So those, all those are new. We talk about how we can load fonts, how we can handle tilt stuff, and the colors, which are used to be stored on the frame. So fr frame.orange, frame.green, but now we've made them global variables. And various constants are all sort of looped in there. All right, well, why don't we leave you uh, there then? This was uh, the book of Hollander Maui. Isn't that nice? This is called Focuso, by the way, Focuso Photography. And uh, you should have a read at the end if you so desire. Let's see. The out of focus, very suggestive, evocative. The style is superb. Excellent photographs. Uh, Ciao, be. Testa or something from Portugal. Superb impressionistic images. Really interesting pictures. These guys are all photographers from Switzerland, from England. A wild, refreshing technique. Nolan Webb. Wow. Maui's Focuso art is truly awesome. And all sorts of other reviews here as well for this fellow Hollander Maui. Nice, huh? Uh, I think I messed up something because look, there's, did you guys see it? <laughs> what happened to my top and the bottom? I still have the made with Zim. I think I replaced the wrong thing there in my, uh, made with. I set, uh, -oh. was there an extra null in here? And then that's the quote quote or was the quote quote the first one? I have to go look up the f made with. Uh, I have to go to the end. Anyway, you don't need to see that. <laughs> I'm sure we can, we can figure it out. Well, a nice... Okay, we'll do it together. You want to know, right? Hey! We go to the frame. We look up its methods. So on the methods of the frame. Right here, there's load asset. That's an important one. Uh, or load assets, plural. There's asset, which used to be more important, but now we've got pick and all those. Uh, follow, which means the frame will follow a certain thing, set default frames, or make cat, make icon, made with. So here are the parameters of the made with right there. So what you can do possibly is just take those like this. So what have we got here? The color, the text. Ah, the text is quote, quote. And then the edges we were setting to default, I'm pretty sure, and that wasn't there. And then this is the box color. So there's all ways that you can change stuff about that. And I think we just changed it wrong. <laughs> so let's see if we've changed it right now. Okay. So a refresh here. And we got to get to the end. 
it's neat. You can tell this thing, by the way, click on a button, go to any page. Yeah, there we go. So no text anymore. And we, oops, we have that stuff. Don't rely, there, there we are going back to Zim, but don't rely on that if you're in a Hicketnunk related site, so TIA for instance, uh, you can't link out to places like that. So it basically just wouldn't work there. You can link out to certain pages, but not very many, only maybe interplanetary file system pages or some other sort of stat page type things or something like that. But anyway, you'd have to look up that for yourself. So don't rely on external links working, nor on getting data from external places. Uh, so just beware there. And I am Dr. Abstract. These are some of the NFTs that we've been making with Zim. And this is a series called Making Interactive NFTs. And you can join us at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord. We would love to see you there. All the best.